Garrett, thanks for talking with us. What, what has uh, DeMar Dotson brought to the offensive line, specifically the last few weeks when he's been in playing? Um, DeMar Dotson, he's a veteran. He's a 12-year veteran, so he brings a lot to the table. A guy that's seen a lot of things, has played a lot of downs. Um, he's a very smart, savvy vet. Um, I've learned a lot from him since he's been here. You know, we have a great relationship. Um, I'm actually grateful he's here. You know, a guy that I can lean on and a guy that I can ask little questions that, you know, in between whistles and things like that. So um, I think he brings – he helps us out a lot. He stepped up big time, and I know he's going to continue to rise for us. Next one, Mike Cliss. Garrett, how is the contract year going for you? Uh, is <laughs> is it some? I know you say you don't you you know you don't worry about the contract. You're worrying about the next game, the next practice. But do you think about the contract that you got a wife, kids? Think about the contract every now and then. Um, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I really don't I really don't um, pay attention to it at all. I'm here to play football. Um, I'm here to be the best version of myself. I'm here to be um, the best player I can be to protect Drew's blind side. Um, I'm here to help us win football games and and, and get better. Um, I'm, to be honest, I know you're all gonna ask me about my contract, but that's I'm not I'm not gonna really worry about that. You know that's why I, I pay somebody to do that. I pay somebody to take care of my contract to talk to the people in the front office. So my job is to play football, and that's what I'm gonna do. Next one, Troy Rank. Garrett, uh, you're a physical player. You like to play that way. How much can you channel that into this game against the Chiefs team that has beaten you guys nine straight times? Are you guys tired of hearing about this and how they have just kind of had their way with you? Um, of course we're mad. You know, nine in a row, that's unacceptable for an organization like this. Um, we want to be the best that we can be. I feel like we have a special group of guys in the locker room, guys that are eager to win and guys that do the little things right. Um, you know, last week I thought we did a phenomenal job with the little things, and we came out big. Um, I know our defense is going to step up, but, you know, in games like this, it's our job to control the field because, you know, their offense is a powerful offense that scored a lot of points. So if we, if we can stay on the field and do our job and take care of the ball, then we're going to come out where we need to be. Next one, Jeff Legwald. Hey, Garrett, uh, a lot of folks are saying you're playing your best football right now. I'm curious uh, as to if you think that's true and – if so, you've wanted to play like this before. What what has specifically been the difference? Do you think? Well, the difference is just my mental game. I think in the you know the time that I put in this off season, I put a lot of effort. You know, when guys you know this whole COVID thing hit, a lot of guys didn't have weight rooms and things like that. But I was lucky enough to have a little weight room by myself. I pushed myself extremely hard. I did the little things by taking extra sets, by watching film and knowing where my hand placements are, doing a lot of hand drills. But mostly it's just a mental thing. I, I, I spent a lot of time this offseason on mental aspect, which, you know, I, I had the physical, I had, you know, the tools, to, you know, to take care of, you know, the technique, things like that. It was all mental. You know, if your mind's not right, you can't play this game. And when you, when you have a straight and narrow mind and, you know, it's, and you tighten it when times get hard and you continue to work hard, and that's what I did. And, you know, I feel like that's what's uh, showing on the field. Kind of what, what was the difference to make you take that step? What? Was there something that just made you realize that was important? No, I'm always the biggest critic of myself. You know, I, I block out the noise and really just focus on the people that are around me, my small group of people that love and support me. And I and I listen to them and I trust them and, I, and they believe in me as long as I believe in them. And um, that's really what it was. The difference really was was just going back and watching my film and, and seeing what I did good and seeing what I did bad and fixing those mistakes. So when I come out on the football field, I know where I need to be. I feel comfortable in those positions. And uh, I pretty much have seen everything in the last three years. So there's really nothing else that you can throw at me that I haven't seen um, from ups to downs. And I really just have to not get too high with the highs and too low with the low. Next one, Artie Stapleton. Hey, Garrett, do you um, feel different when you go out onto the field this year as far as maybe a level of confidence or anything? And then also, I remember last year you talking about how, you know, Munch had your back and, and was kind of in your corner all the time. Was there anything he said that really resonated that really kind of turned things around for you, maybe like halfway through last year? Uh, me and Munch have a special relationship. Um, you know, we meet one-on-one -on -one before every single game. We meet throughout the week. Um, he understands how I feel and, and, and my demeanor to be the best and, and really just really helped me to stay on track. Um, but like I said, my quote, you all know, it doesn't matter how you start, it matters how you finish. And that's really how it is. You know, I started off rocky, and I'll be the first one to admit it. But where I'm at, you know, you can ne it's never too late to turn things around. And I'm a true believer in that. And uh, that's what I've done. And I'm going to continue to ride this this wave as long as I can. That's time for a few more. Next one, Nick Kozmider. 
Yeah, Garrett, thanks for taking the time. A quick two-parter for you. Number one, you said you worked on the mental aspect in the offseason. What exactly does that entail? Is that watching a lot of film like you talked about? Is it meditating? What, what sort of goes into that? And then secondly, uh, with you, it's, it's the durability. 53 games in, you haven't missed any of them. What goes into that part of it, of always just being ready to play every Sunday? I take care. I'm, I mean, I'm a big believer in taking care of your body, um, eating right. Um, I eat extremely healthy. I think that I'm super flexible. But I've always been like that my whole life. I've always been that guy that, you know, is always ready to go. You know, I just I pride myself on that. I um, mean, I really think it comes down to the mental aspect, you know, how you take care of your body, how, how you eat, how you sleep, um, and what you put in of your body, because that's the, you know, the energy level that you're going to get day in and day out. And I feel like my energy is hot. Um, and I worked hard on the mental aspect, which just, like I said, I really just focused on myself. Um, you know, being with my family for, you know, the nine months that we weren't here, um, I really just reflected on how to become a better father, how to become a better husband, really focus on my kids, um, and really just focus on the family. And uh, once I did that, I could get myself away from football and really just dial in on what's important because I played this game not only because I love it, but I played for my, my beautiful wife, Natalie, my two kids, Kingston and Rye, and, and that's the fuel that fuels the fire. And I know if I have them in my mind, then I'll be able to go anywhere and be able to take, you know, my ability anywhere and my durability, and, and now I'm showing on the field, so. I'm super grateful for that. Appreciate it. Final one, uh, Andrew. Garrett, with few or no fans for games, what impact does that have on gameplay for you as an offensive tackle and for the entire offensive line? And do you like it or do you miss the fans? Um, you're always going to miss the fans. You know, we have the greatest fans here out of any national football team. I feel like our fans are diehard fans that love and cheer us on along the way. Um, it is a little weird, like I said before, last time I spoke to you all, but at the same time, you know, our job is to play football. And, and when you're on that football field, fans or without fans, it's still the same game. Um, you know, you can't really hear anything when you're on the field because you're so dialed in uh, mentally and you're just going to do your assignments. So, um, of course, we miss them, but at the same time, you know, it's it's a different time and we got to respect the different time and continue to work hard and just, you know, it's the same day, um, just different times.